I would like to call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome. Um, we'll start out with announcements. Uh, I'll begin. Uh, uh, it was gracious of Sonoma State Library to host our meeting on uh, Saturday. We had a productive meeting, uh, a lot of things covered. And related to that, um, I will check back at the end of the meeting, but I have a proposal. There was some debate um, at the previous meeting regarding the, February, the April meeting about um, an all-day meeting versus a shorter meeting. And one of the things that came out of the retreat, uh, which uh, was the idea of establishing a, um, an ad hoc committee for uh, standard operating procedures or protocols, and so I would like to propose, but we can talk about this at the end of the meeting so you have time to think about this. But I would like to propose that um, we uh, form the committee tonight for the standing operating procedures, and I'll be asking for volunteers at the end of the meeting, and then that those people meet in the morning of the next, of April 4th, and then we would have lunch, and also we're having a closed session for uh, director evaluation, and we would have that after lunch and then start the meeting for the budget workshop. So that's going to be my proposal for April 4th. Uh, anybody have any comments about that now? So uh, at the end of the meeting, I'll check for volunteers for the standard. I've already had one for the standing, uh, the, the uh, ad hoc committee. So um, that's basically my announcements. Are there any other announcements at all? All right, next is public appearances. Any members of the public wishing to address the commission? All right, now we'll move on to library advisory board and friends of the library. I believe we have somebody we have Peter here from Guerneville. And representing several other labs and friends. So, would you, uh, could you uh, move to the mic, please? I don't need a mic, but, but I think you can all the, hear me the, without the, the mic. TV but, ah, for the recordings and all of that. So, I brought copies of this, which I've sent to everybody on the lab. Uh, the commission commit committed to a long and productive day last weekend. There were lots of ideas flying around the tables. Now I call upon the commission to act upon these ideas. There are three types of interactions which I believe could be helpful in establishing better relationships with the library supporters. A, I urge you to open up verbal communications with labs and friends. One way, Include a member of the labs and or friends on your ad hoc committees. Two, have a monthly Saturday morning breakfast workshop just before the first Monday of the month commission meeting. Invite lab people, friends, and commission members. Include the lab and friends chairs in one of your twice annual retreats. So second big point, Get to know your support groups by socializing together. First, each commissioner should host an annual social event uh, in their region. A barbecue, a wine tasting, a picnic, something like that, to which the friends and the labs are invited, and anybody else you want to invite. The commission should host one annual book event floating around to the various regions to eventually each region It'll take a decade. Uh, the commission should co-host one annual charitable event. Pick a charity. Same every year or a different one. All proceeds go to the charity after expenses. The third point, remember verbal communication, socializing together, and third one's going to be working together. Establish some action work groups through alliances, partnerships to get the labs and friends and commissions, commission people, working together at common goals. One way, start with a good deed alliance to devote half a day a year, once, just one day, once a year, to a worthwhile venture, cleaning up a riverbank, distributing books to worthwhile recipients. Second thing, 
the commission could host some sort of event on one of the annual holidays, President's Day or the 4th of July, maybe something at Wheel Hall Green Music Center, who do big, big events, always looking for more people to put on things there. The third thing, the commission could designate one annual spring day to landscape a site selected by, who, who knows, uh, such as Roseland or the new Forestville Town Park or Occidental's new community center. Um, so those are the three things I'm stressing that, and it's not the, just these things, I'm just throwing things out here, but verbal communication, could be improved by doing things that make you talk together, you and the labs, uh, socializing together, which we don't do hardly at all, and working together at some sort of common goals, because there's nothing like rolling up your sleeves together to put rose bushes in that makes you talk to your neighbors, and we're just your neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I neglected an announcement that I'd like to get back to, uh, are there any comments to public comment? I mean, for lab reports? I wanted to introduce uh, Jane uh, Clickman, who is our administrative assistant part-time. She's now on board. Uh, so you'll be, if you see Jane's name on things, that's Jane. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jane, and welcome. Moving on to uh, commission reports. Uh, any, let's start. Uh, let's start in the middle with David today. Uh, reports from David. I had a wonderful time at the LOCN meeting, where it was sold out. I think there were probably 180 people in attendance. And in order to get into that um, hall, community center, uh, they all had to pass through our Roseland Library. Uh, so it was a wonderful time, and I was there with uh, Commissioner uh, Linda Garcia as well, and uh, Ken Neiman and uh, Kia Okasawa uh, Okasa was there as well. So it was um, a nice event for our library to be seen, um, and I know that there are lots of other opportunities for us to be seen elsewhere. Thank you. Joanne? Uh, our lab met as well as our friends group last month, and... Um, I believe it was on February 11th, and we discussed uh, a number of routine things, but a couple of things, actually, I apologize, it was February 12th, uh, a lot of routine things, a couple of the highlights going on with the Sonoma Lab uh, are, and the branch, are that um, we held a, an evening for the teens, for, um, we pre presented a movie, the movie Grease, and um, the friends paid for pizza, so the kids had dinner and a movie at the branch when the branch was closed, and we had a really nice turnout. So again, this is for Sonoma Valley branch, and turnout was over 20 kids. So it was, it was a, we considered that a success, and I just want to thank staff for staying late and supervising that. They had the library to themselves, but they still had to have a couple of adults there. So I want to thank Claire and Lisa for going the extra mile that day. And then second thing that's going on that I think is worth mentioning in Sonoma is that we are going to have a presence at every farmer's market. As many of you probably experience in your communities, Sonoma's farmer's market is extremely well attended. It's a Tuesday night where many, many, many uh, members, a diverse group of, re diverse representation of the Sonoma Valley community come out to enjoy food and community spirit and music and we will have a table at that um, farmer's market every week. So I think it'll work handily with um, some of the messaging that we're looking to get out about the library, and we're putting together and funding a, a little toolkit that kind of goes on wheels so that whoever has the duties of manning the booth that evening will have plenty of giveaways and brochures and information about what's going on with the library. So... Between those two things, I think that pretty much concludes my report. We'll be meeting again this Thursday, March uh, 10th, in Sonoma at the Sonoma Library. And the, the meeting starts at 345, and it's a combination meeting between the library advisory board members and the friends. Thank you. Uh, 
I don't have anything really significant to report from Windsor. Hi, I had a few things, for, a couple of things for Roner Park. Um, one is I attended the Roner Park Chamber of Commerce meeting last week. They have a noon times event where all the everybody there gets to stand up and introduce themselves. And I've been going. I think it's the last four times, and so I'm trying to get become known as the library commissioner and. Um, there in the, in the community, I was asked to, uh, by one of the people there, to come over and speak to the Rancho Cotati uh, Rotary. So I'm making good connections, and I hope that I'll be able to speak actually to the Rona Park Chamber of Commerce itself uh, in September. Um, I suggested at, the, at both the lab meeting and the friends meeting that we try this kind of overlap meeting like, like you do in Sonoma, and I believe it happens in Guerneville, I'm not sure, where um, the friends would meet first and the, then the lab mem members would come in and there would be an overlap time where all the management and library reports were, were given and everybody, back to Peter's point, kind of get to know each other a little bit. And um, so it looks like we've got the okay from both groups and I hope that will happen in July. Um, I wanted to say that I thought the treat, retreat on Saturday was uh, very well done, and I wanted to thank Hillary in particular for getting us our meeting site at Sonoma State University. It was a lovely place to, and perfect place to meet in the information center there. And uh, thanks to Helena for the agenda, and I don't know who else I'm missing who worked on it, but it was a, it was a good day. And um, lastly, I wanted to welcome to Runner Park, in case anybody in our branch watches this, I wanted to welcome our new children's librarian, Kate Drueski, our part-time aide, Linda Sims, and congratulate Eric uh, Lindenbush, who's, who's been in our branch for a while, and he's been promoted to librarian, and he's a great guy, and I just wanted to congratulate him on tape. <clears throat> thank you. I also would like to thank Hillary and SSU for opening up to our retreat. Um, it was an incredible place to hold it. And I enjoyed the retreat immensely. One of the best things I liked about it was a variety of opinions and perspectives about things and the ability for um, my compadres to sit in the room and discuss openly these things without angst or a lot of angst anyway, some of us did have <laughs> some, I should say, but without anger and tension and all that kind of stuff that goes with it, nastiness. It was a really, it was a pleasure to be able to sit and hold discussions about things and, and with all the different perspectives. So, um, attended sustainable circles again uh, for our monthly meeting, learned a lot about lighting it's really interesting. I walk into places now and I'm looking up at the ceiling wondering what's happening up there. Um, and we're working hard on compiling our list of initiatives to um, apply to the library to make our plan out. And, you know, it's a five-year plan, so it's not everything going to be done tomorrow. Uh, it's been really, really interesting doing that. And I had the opportunity, which kind of fell in conjunction with this, to accompany my partner to Denver to a Pace Nation conference, which is uh, property assessed clean energy financing that the county is involved with. And I go to things like that and I sit on the outside and I let people come to me and talk and then they leave and somebody else comes and that's the way I spend the evenings. And one man strolled over to me and sat down and we started a conversation and all of a sudden he was talking about how he was in the process of retrofitting, consulting in the retrofitting of all his libraries in his county. And he and I had a really engaging conversation and I walked away knowing some, some more about this whole process of doing something like this. And then later I attended a uh, workshop session that was uh, involved, it's called Civic Pace, and it involves properties that don't have property taxes, because most of your government agencies don't pay property taxes. And it's a way of trying to finance some of the sustainable uh, energy and uh, options in buildings like that. And I, I'm going to find out more about it because all of our buildings are owned by these cities, and if we can figure out ways to do some of these things, it would be great. So that was, that's pretty much what I did. 
this last month? Uh, I don't have a lot to add to Commissioner McKenzie's report. Um, the Rohnert Park Katati Lab, um, in addition to restructuring our meetings to allow some joint uh, meetings with the friends, we also amended our bylaws to open up our group to up to three youth members. So we're hoping to expand youth membership. We, we have one youth member now, and uh, we hope to add two more. Um, and that's all I have to add. Uh, I would like to announce that, first of all, uh, in the spirit of our libraries, I liked being at lunch with some friends and one of them saying, boy, the reference librarians in Petaluma were really helpful. I was trying to find a book and they went over and above the call of duty. So that was really wonderful to hear. Um, it's also, uh, I, I was, uh, I was called before the grand jury, which I've been told that I can say. I cannot say what I was asked about. And I was, um, we held, they met with me in Petaluma in the uh, forum room, I mean in the back conference room. So basically an announcement that I was called before the grand jury. Um, and um, that's about it for me. Um, hi, I wanted to uh, update you on what Sebastopol's doing. The Sebastopol Lab met on February 3rd, and our part time children's librarian, Michelle Santa Maria, sat in for branch manager Matthew Rose. The lab is looking forward to try to increase outreach to their community and trying to come up with ideas on how to do that. Two of our three youth members um, attend Anley High School and are planning on putting regular library information articles in their high school newspaper, which would be wonderful, and also perhaps setting up a special table in their school library with information about our library system. Um, at the library itself, they had a recent event called Mindful Minis, which was a really successful program for kids that provided children a chance to try yoga and meditation. And um, I think it was successful enough that it, it will probably return uh, periodically to the library. The chalkboard painted tables in the teen space, um, complete with chalk, have been well received. And I understand that um, teens write quotes and things like that on the tables, which is, is kind of cool. The, uh, library is now planning to provide window markers in the children's area so that they can decorate the windows um, with art. The city of, Se of Sebastopol, along with the library and other partners, are working on beginning a children's garden on the library grounds. In uh, oh, Later this month, adults will have the opportunity to share memories of phonographs during a podcast recording of Phonographic Memories, and that's on March 26th, and that sounds really interesting, and David Dodd probably knows more about that. <laughs> um, then next month, um, there's a group called the Alphabet Rockers that will perform interesting educational songs during National Library Week, and that's uh, uh, April 15th. There is some preparation planning being made for a booth at the Apple Blossom Festival, which will be April 16th and that weekend. Um, and later in April, the Ballet Folklorico will be at Sebastopol, April 30th. That's all. Thanks. Uh, the Guerneville Lab will be meeting this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And I'd really like to see you all come out because... You know, it's, it's, it's a nice drive for me, and it's a beautiful drive, and, you know, you should all come and uh, meet with this group, you know. I don't expect anybody to, else to be there. Maybe Brett. Brett be there, but, it's a good group. But anyway, it's a good group, I just want to say. So. There's cookies. And there's usually cookies. Usually. So, yeah. so thank you. Santa Rosa Lab will be meeting Wednesday, March 16th. Um, in addition, I also attended the workshop, also attended La Cien, uh, 
a Rosalind event, as did some people here in this room. And my question regarding Rosalind, of course, is we can bring up funding or what the future is for Rosalind um, during budget workshops, but are we evaluating uh, the number of people and are the hours that Rosalind is open, is it working for the uh, Rosalind, the people who live in Rosalind, the people who come, and along with the Girls and Boys Club, but it's just a thought. Thank you. Hi. Um, our lab met on the 3rd, um, and at our lab um, I printed the agenda for our retreat and I shared uh, all of the key things that we're going to be working on at the retreat. Um, I think everybody on my lab liked that. They, they liked the idea that they were included in that model. Um, So that's one thing. Um, also, the Heelsburg Friends are going to be having their lab, I mean, their book sale on the, uh, starting the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Um, also, uh, at our library uh, in the special function room, uh, there's a homeless art uh, model, real, real similar to the one Rebecca put together, um, and that is engaging uh, our deep set of homeless people uh, in Sonoma County and um, and uh, we gathered books to go out to them and uh, anyway they're doing art um, and also um, as was talked about in our uh, retreat about going over the bylaws for the each individual labs I've already reached out to um, two key people in our lab and we're going to be meeting and talking about uh, looking at our bylaws for our lab. Um, uh, and finally, uh, um, the finance committee was, uh, did have a, a meeting with the grand jury, which we can't talk about other than to say that we did have that. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. I, that was a hell of a, a retreat and I think that we really we really gelled there as a team. I, I want to say that. Thank you. Thanks again to the committee that put it all together. Reese and, and Helena and uh, Taylor, thank you. All right, moving along to the uh, committee's reports, the director's evaluation committee. Uh, the director's evaluation committee did not meet this week. Um, our meeting is going to be rescheduled for some time in the next two weeks, and it will be appropriately noticed uh, when that happens. And then we'll be having a closed session meeting with the full commission in, during the April 4th meeting, as previously discussed. Thank you. Finance? The Finance Committee met on Monday, February 22nd in the Central Library Boardroom. In attendance were Commissioners McKenzie, Whistler, Foxen, and Grill, Director Lear, and CFO Newman. Commissioner Neff was also set in on the meeting, as he has been doing. We had no public members present. The committee re reviewed the monthly financials pre prepared by CFO Newman, noted were the $33,750 in polling expenses paid to Lou Edwards Group, uh, and I think we're looking at January expenses. Um, by way of comparison, polling in 2014 cost about $50,000. <clears> At <throat> uh, the request of the Commissioner Grill, CFO Neiman had uh, distributed a graph showing the comparison of revenue versus expenditures and showing the effect of various COLA amounts. This was a graph that had been prepared earlier for discussions regarding various COLA impacts on the budget. So we, we just looked at it. We hadn't seen it, actually. Commissioner uh, priorities that we collected at our last commission meeting um, were discussed and we went over our notes and made sure we had collected all of them and are being taken into consideration as the budget's being prepared for the upcoming year. And lastly, I was going to note that Commissioner Grill already said the Finance Committee did meet with the Grand Jury Committee earlier on February 22nd and all committee members signed confidentiality agreements and cannot discuss what took place. Thank you. Is there any um, input that you would like or questions you have for the commission as a whole at this point 
regarding anything on the Finance Committee agenda, or do you need us to discuss anything further? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Um, you've talk, Are there questions that you see coming up that you'd like input from us on? For the Finance Committee in general? Yes. Um, I next the only thing I know that we're talking about at the next meeting for sure we're going to look at health care costs and we're going to consider a couple of possibilities including uh, possibly having an audit committee or audit subcommittee to the finance committee and I believe we're going to look at uh, possibly having an ad hoc committee look at unfunded liabilities okay that I haven't actually done the agenda yet all right. And if any else, anybody has any input about that, I'd be interested in hearing it. Thank you. Joanne? Thank you, Tim. I just had a question I wanted to clarify. Um, Barbara, what did you sign confidentiality agreements for? There's a subcommittee of the grand jury that met with the finance committee on February 22nd. Okay, thank you. All right. Public Relations? Public Relations Committee met this afternoon, and David E. Bright, Paul Heavenridge, Randall Neff, and myself were the commissioners present, along with Brett uh, Lear, the director. Uh, we discussed, well, and then Bonnie Jean from Lou Edwards joined us on the telephone because we want to be able to coordinate what public relations and what the commissioners are doing with her outreach to the community so that we're not crossing each other or tripping over each other. Um, and out of that came some items. Um, we're going to be creating a toolkit that will be posted online with the FAQs and strategic plan and some other papers that might, and statistics that might help commissioners, you know, when they go to make presentations, um, that they can just pull quickly. We're also going to create a calendar because one of the things that we realized was that we don't have a sense of who's going to where when, and it would be nice to be able to kind of keep track of that so we have a good idea of what's being covered and who's being covered, especially since we're doing such a concerted effort to raise the visibility of the library. So it, we're going to post a calendar, and then the commissioners can just put in when they're meeting and where they're meeting, et cetera, um, so we have an idea. And it's not just with your JPA, but any group you meet with or anybody you might talk to that you feel is important to the process. Um, we also um, want to kind of gather some more names of people that can be contacted within the different entities or areas. Um, and I think that, oh, want to make sure that you connect with your uh, branch manager with all of this is, that's happening because, we again, we need to have a coordinated effort, not so we're tripping over each other or being repetitive or redundant in this process. It's something we'd like to, to avoid. And so that we can work together for some of these things that are happening. So we'd like to do that. As soon as that's up, I'll get Jane to send an email out to everybody, letting everybody know what the link is, et cetera. So, okay. So that was the public relations this afternoon. Uh, what's the status on the uh, PowerPoint for the present? You took photos on Saturday. I took photos on Saturday. So I put the photos in and, and uh, one part of it and then realized that all my statistics were on a thumb drive that I had put in Jane's briefcase when we were in Denver and I had failed to get it out so I couldn't finish dropping the statistics in otherwise I would have had everything tonight okay so I'll drop those in by the end of the week and I will personally deliver things to everybody if they wish thank you so you will have it and, and the pictures you. turned out very nice pardon me the pictures turned out very nice so I did trim my great beard, variety just... of pictures is Good what thing. I love <laughs> It's cool. All right. Thank you. Any questions of the committee? Can I ask a question? So when are we going to launch? I mean, are people already out there talking? 
Uh, some are, but really we haven't launched. We're going, I mean, this is the push now. And that's why we're putting the calendar up. That's why we're doing the toolkit. That's why I'm finishing off that presentation. So those who want to use that one can. It's also the presentation that Bonnie Jean put together. We'll, we'll have access to it online as well. So you can download it and use it if you choose, whichever one you want to go with um, initially. So are we all re responsible for finding our own laptops? And uh, I would imagine that if you're going to be making a presentation, you would probably, I mean, this is, people can tell me if I'm wrong. I sometimes am. Um, would you, that you will just bring the thumb drive and they'll have the equipment to do the presentation? I think sometimes that's true, but I don't know that's always true. Okay. David? And also in answer to part of your question about have we launched this, um, I'm reporting to my appointing body, the Santa Rosa City Council, uh, and giving a presentation on April 5th uh, at about 4 p.m. So, One of the other things that came out and, and kind of drives behind the calendar is everybody will know what everybody else is doing. So if they want to go and support them or they want to go and see how it's being done or just want to go and... and say, hey, I'm here sitting quietly in the audience, you know, so you're not alone. Uh, or if you want to refer to them for an answer, it, it'll make it much easier for people to be able to do that because they will know where things are happening and when things are happening. Who's maintaining the calendar? I'm going to get it set up and then probably shift some of it over to Jane on the end. But I think everybody will... What I want is something that everybody can add to as they do it. So, so you're essentially doing just a calendar for the commissioners as yeah. opposed to the rest of the yes. speaking bureau. Yeah, okay. just mainly for the commissioners at this point in time. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, can we hear from the Revenue Enhance Com Enhancement Committee? Revenue Enhancement Committee met... Yeah, the 22nd, thank you very much. Yes, and we had Wendy Hilberman, the executive director for the Sonoma County Library, Public, Public Library Foundation, come and she actually spent pretty much the whole time there and it was a really good discussion. We got to know her, or she got to know us. We kind of talked about what, what each entity, entity did and where we were and I personally think that she's a great addition to the foundation and she is incredibly supportive of working together with the library to move the library forward to support it and find those funds that you know they can provide as a foundation so I think it was a really really positive meeting and a good step in moving forward in, in making building that relationship that we desperately need all right thank you mm -hmm. I forgot to add one thing, if I might. Um, so, uh, I guess it was last week, uh, Catherine Reinhardt had invited us to the uh, archive building out on Pythian Way, and Randall and I went. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a pretty incredible, uh, long-in-the-tooth um, building with, with uh, records to go back to 1850. Um, and it's um, deeply in need of uh, some kind of a, a new model. I, and and I, I think one of the reasons Catherine had us there was to, to try and drum up some support. What a, what a desperate situation that is. And, and, and Randall, what was very interesting to me is that, so he's very conversant in all of the archival vernacular uh, by work. He had worked at the um, Technology Museum. Is that right, Randall? Technology Museum in San Jose? Pardon me? Computer history. And, you know, there's like, it's interesting, you know, it's like some of these papers are pH sensitive, you know, and that uh, things I'd never considered, but all kinds of things. But anyway, I would encourage anybody if they had the opportunity to go and take a look at that.
Oh, and, and it's also interesting that it's fun, it's it falls under the library, and I would say 80% of the, the uh, materials there is really from the county. Yeah, I think that we are. Thank you. All right, any other comments, any public comments on committee reports? Looks like, uh, okay. Moving right along, we'll go to the approval of the minutes. Are there any additions or um, amendments to the minutes? All right, so I'll entertain a motion. I so move Second. that we approve the minutes. All right, who seconded it? Oh. Uh, Paul. So that's Paul, Paul Heavenbridge and Paul uh, Grill. Uh, for the sake of Jane today, uh, when you make a motion, state your name okay. so that because it needs to be, that will help. And so she doesn't have to scroll through the entire document to figure out who did it. All right, thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? One abstention? Two abstentions. Two, three abstentions. All right. Sanders. Sanders. Hebright. No. Uh, Randall Neff. Uh, David E. Bright and Joanne Sanders. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is correspondence and press coverage. Uh, I didn't, one of the things that used to happen is we would get those in email before the meeting. Um, we didn't get any this time that I know of. I do know that there was an article in the Argus regarding uh, Lumicon. And I also know that there was a letter to the editor uh, uh, in regards to that uh, event, being sure to say that it was a co-sponsored event between the high school and the Petaluma Library. Yes? There was an article in the Cloverdale Revel about the new mobile app that was quite lengthy and very good. <laughs> All right. OK. Um, we have on the consent calendar an item about revenue sharing agreement. And um, uh, on in front of your chairs today, uh, there is a, um, a, apparently in the packet, some pieces were missing uh, on the document. Um, so does anyone? want the item removed from the consent calendar or can we just move ahead with it? I have additional information about this item if anybody would want any. All right. I'm hearing no one asking to have it removed from the consent calendar. If that's the case, it is approved. We are clicking through this meeting today. <laughs> I know, I need to move on here. Management report, Brett. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'll just highlight a few things. Uh, first of all, Ken Neiman, our CFO, and I are working on getting the budget together for the upcoming budget workshop. So that's certainly a priority right now. Um, we're ready to begin our facilities master planning process. Uh, and again, that's scheduled to be complete by July. Um, one thing I've been doing as library director over the last week or so, and it will continue for about the next six weeks, is I'm going around all of our libraries and all of our work units and talking one-on-one -on -one with the staff about our strategic plan and getting any questions that they have and also sharing which goals we'll initiate in the next year. Um, but that's... I've done one of those now, and, and I have about 10 to go. Um, but I'm really looking forward to having those talks with the staff now that we're ready to get moving with our new plan. Um, we've offered three training sessions now to get folks trained with the Speakers Bureau. We did one, David Ebright and I did one last week that was mostly friends uh, members. We had about 12 folks, so that was nice to get some of our friends trained. 
And now what I have to do with the staff is really just tie up some loose ends, send an email out to all the people that have been trained and, and just kind of work through some of the logistics about encouraging folks now that they've been trained to get out there and, and secure some speaking engagements, get the slides to everybody, you know, work out some logistics that came up tonight. Um, you know, do we give everybody a flash drive? And there's just some specifics now that we've trained people that, that we need to get done. So I've been meeting with staff this week to work through some of those specifics. Um, and then lastly, I put this in the management report, but I just wanted to mention that I'm about a third of the way through my executive MBA program with SSU. And so far, I've just really found the classes I've been taking to have just a direct relationship with the stuff that I work on every day. I've had classes in talent management and um, financial statements, marketing. Uh, so again, I, I've really appreciated the experience and it's really allowed me to sit down with Ken and you know talk about things a lot more in depth than I used to be around finances. And then I'm sure that Patrick noticed that I had my talent management class the last term because he and I had a lot of conversations about human resources and that. Uh, but again, I'm really enjoying that program. That's it. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, any a couple of hands. Okay. So just yeah. reading through your very detailed report, Brett, I noticed that it's, it's actually a lot more detailed now that you've been taking these courses at Sonoma State. So maybe that's part of the, uh, part of the training that you're getting there. Um, I have a question about a meeting that you had with the North Bay Leadership Council, and I was just curious. Um, I saw that you went to a meeting. I believe you went with a couple of other commissioners, and just curious how you decide who you're taking to what meetings. Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, I, I believe it came up through the Revenue Enhancement Committee. We were talking about you know, how important it was for the library to make better inroads with the business community, and then we just started brainstorming um, names of particular leaders, and that's where... Um, now I'm blanking on who we met with. Who did we, who, who did we meet Cynthia with? Cynthia Murray. Oh, yeah. Cynthia Murray. Yeah, Cynthia, we met with Cynthia Murray, and then we've been, we've been trying to... Um, get in touch with uh, Brad Bollinger as well um, of the North Bay Business Journal. Um, and certainly any suggestions that you have or anybody else has, but it's been something I've been wanting to do since I started is just us building better relationships with our business community. Barbara? Yeah, I had some questions. Um, one, I was curious um, when you're going to have the meetings with staff um, in the different locations to discuss a strategic plan, whether you would want the commissioners to be there to make sure we're dialed in with what you're saying? You're welcome to attend. Um, you know, it's, I look at the strategic plan as our work plan for the next four or five years, so I just really wanted to meet with the staff and share with them which of the goals that we're going to work on first and answer any of their questions, knowing that, you know, we're going to have some change in the organization now that we're focusing on the things that are detailed in the plan. Um, you think, think it would be it, helpful for us to be there so we hear what? I think it would probably be, you know, educational for, you know, the commissioners who want to attend to, to hear more detail about, you know, the things that will be happening, you know, at an operational level in the libraries over the next year, absolutely. Um, How would we get a calendar for that then? Okay. Um, yeah, I can share that with everyone. I can send that out tomorrow. Great. And then I have, I have actually like four little questions. One is I was curious how many uh, showed up at your coffee with the director in Runner Park. I saw the sign, but I... It was an uh, intimate group. I think maybe five. Maybe five. Okay, well, it's better than zero. I was wondering also about... Um, I saw this uh, camp, the spring break video camp at Roseland. I would love to see something like that duplicated if we have the resources to do that. I was also curious, um, the, and the Northwest branch had the Lion Dancers um, that were composed of students from Tech High School and Lawrence E. Jones Middle School, both of which are in Runner Park. And I was curious um, how they ended up at the Northwest branch instead of at the Runner Park at Toddy branch. I don't know the history of that. Keo might or Kathy Deweese. Yeah. Okay, 
Um, I actually think it was uh, it's staff at the Rincon Valley branch who've developed the relationship with that um, Southeast um, Vietnamese Association, the SOVA, whatever whatever it stands for, which is students from Roner Park. Um, and they performed, I think, at four different branches over the kind of Chinese New Year celebration area. Um, Roner Park, I'm not sure why they didn't choose to host that program, but um, but but they had they had the opportunity. Um, and we have been doing a um, we did a performances with them last summer as well. So we're kind of developing that relationship. So hopefully we'll see more of those. Yeah, that's really cool. Now that's something that the branch managers went, would select or not. So um, well, the, as that was a children's program that was selected by the children's librarians, and given the kind of turnover at Roner Park right now, I would I would suspect that that might be a reason why they might have scaled back on activities kind of during that two month period. Gotcha. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, as for your question about the um, Spring Break Video Camp, that actually uh, it initiated from a partnership that. David um, pulled together with C Media, um, but then the folks at C Media currently are offering a similar video production camp through San, through Parks and Rec, through Santa Rosa Parks and Rec, um, that people pay lots of money for, um, and they offered. They say we want to come and do this for free here at Roseland, and I would love to replicate that in other in other locations. I wouldn't um, I wouldn't assume that they would do it for free forever, but they offered for this for this uh, spring break. It's exciting. Maybe something that friends groups could pay for in different areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Other questions regarding the uh, monthly activities document? David? Uh, I've asked a few members of staff, but are there any more fortune cookies? <laughs> Darn, what a wonderful idea. So whoever made that happen, thank you very much. I like that. Uh, brilliant. All right, any other questions or comments? Let's move on to the um, finance report. Oops. Hi, the finance report starts on page 26. Um, pretty normal month, but uh, you can see that uh, our cash balance is uh, going down at this time of the year. It'll it'll bump up again in April when we get the second tax payment. <clears throat> um, we've received about 60% of our um, total budgeted revenue through the end of January, and um, and we're 58.3% through there. So um, that's all good. The tax revenue we've received about. 58% of the budgeted revenue through January. Uh, there are a few items with big payments that uh, put the line items over budget that you can see there. And um, the one uh, payment or expense that was over 25000 for the month was something that um, Barbara, Commissioner McKenzie, already reported on uh, to the Lou Edwards group for $34,000, which included the polling, the expense for the polling. Um, other than that, uh, those are the highlights. We have a, a $1.1 million surplus at the end of January. Um, that'll go down for the next couple months and then again bump up when we get that second uh, tax payment from the county. Excuse me. Is there any questions? So, why? the much larger intergovernmental transfer. I mean, it's uh, three and a half times what it was right. last year, um, which I'm happy about since it's revenue. I'm just curious as to why it's that way. Well, the biggest chunk, uh, well, the reason it's that is because we've received $372,000 in uh, redevelopment um, asset distribution. Um, and. That's what came in in December. Okay. Yep. Is is what you're saying that these are funds that were the city side the redevelopment agencies when those were abolished and the properties were sold? It, yes. The, it's, the library got three hundred seventy-two thousand dollars. Is that yes. what we're talking about? Yes. 
because uh, I this the contract that we talked about earlier on the consent calendar, I called the city of Runner Park to ask about that, like how much money we were going to get out of it. This was two properties in Runner Park. Uh, they were kind of abandoned, beat up old things down in the commercial district, and they they were sold for five hundred and forty thousand dollars for both properties, which I was kind of amazed at. And uh, I was told commercial property isn't as valuable as housing at this point in time. You couldn't certainly couldn't buy two houses for five hundred and forty thousand. So anyway, by the Rona Park sh share of that is that strange two point some six, or you know, the library share is two point is it six. Or nine something percent. Okay. It was going to be about thirteen hundred dollars that the about library was going to About thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand dollars. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. So, but collectively, we've gotten three hundred seventy-two thousand. So, all the different jurisdictions, when these redevelopment agencies were abolished, it resulted in that. That's a huge increase. Oh. That's amazing. Right. And we only get a little piece. Right. Yep. Wow. Thank two, you. Two percent or two and a half. So that, those are one-time. Right. Funds coming in. Right. Um, there was no budget for those this year because uh, the county um, tax uh, person said basically we don't know what's still out there. We don't think there's anything still coming. Um, and then for next year, we're going to be budgeting that at zero again just because uh, it's, not, it's unsure what is still out there. Other questions or comments regarding the financial report? Uh, any, I'm, I will ask for public comment, but there's only staff in the room. So, um, but anyway, I will do that anyway. All right, I have not forgotten, like I almost did last meeting. We now have a monthly staff presentation on an overview of the <laughs> adult literacy program. Good evening. Um, I'm Elisa Adams, and I'm the coordinator for the Adult Literacy Services Programs. And tonight we're here to give you a brief overview of our um, program. Uh, the Adult Literacy Services Programs for the library was started in 1986, so this is our 30th year anniversary, of which we're very proud. We'll talk more about that at the end. Um, but um, there are many services provided by the Literacy Office, and I want to start um, briefly with our core service, which is the one-to-one -one volunteer tutor to learner program. Um, this is library-based, library-wide. Um, it has several components. The, they meet together at their local library branch um, for two hours a week uh, minimum for about six months minimum, often goes on longer. The components to the program also include a digital literacy focus and a um, families for literacy focus for, for adults that have very young children in the household. And we'll go into more detail during this presentation. Um, Off-site, we currently have other services available at two elementary school classrooms for adult learners in the evenings in Santa Rosa. Um, we have a partnership with the Sonoma uh, Sheriff's Office providing inmate literacy services at two facilities and we have an English learner EL civics um, program but I should go back and make sure that I also mentioned the Grayton Day Labor Center. and. Um, Kathy's now going to tell you a little bit more about the revenues and expenses. <clears throat> oh, okay. <Yeah. clears throat> um, so, as Elisa just mentioned, we have several different programs that operate under the aegis of our literacy program, um, and we have a funding source for each one. <laughs> Um, this chart up here shows that the, the majority of the funding for the literacy program comes from the library. Uh, this year, $80,000 was allocated for um, library, its staff and programming and funding of the various programs. Um, the $45,000, that is the state CLS funding, and CLLS stands for California Library Literacy Services. 
Um, that is specifically targeted for that one-on-one -on -one tutoring program um, that Elisa mentioned. Um, the $11,000, um, what do you call that, column, <laughs> um, that is our federal uh, funding. It's the WIOA, which is Workforce Investment Opportunity, Opportunity yeah. Act. There we go. <laughs> Paul knows everything. Um, and, and those are the, the two classrooms that Elisa mentioned we, that teach the EL civics curriculum that are operating in, in a couple of schools right now. Um, and then uh, the $10,000, that's our, our sheriff's contract. And then the $8,000, we get, we get uh, gifts and donations from individuals and from friends groups. And that's kind of the, um, the revenue that, that the program has this year. Um, one thing that is not included in the revenue as it's displayed there is the indirect costs that we that the, that the library attributes to the literacy program, um, and it's and that indirect cost is required in all of our reporting to state and federal grant programs, um, and it's a formula that the budget and finance department has given us that it takes into account things like the cost of the building and utilities and janitorial and even like the time of say the budget and finance professional staff um, paying bills and various things that are called indirect costs. Um, and the um, indirect cost for this current fiscal year is valued at appro approximately $140,000. So that is not reflected in that up there, but is part of what we consider the overall cost of this program. $140,000? Pardon? So the literacy revenues here, we've got 80 grand, 45 grand, 15, 10, and 8, those aggregately they add up to whatever they add up to. And then mm -hmm. in addition, there's soft costs that are running a library mm -hmm. that, run, that add up to another 140. Correct. Five? Okay, thank you. Um, and then just that said that this year, or in the previous slide, we, we said $80,000 from the library. That is part of the library's adopted budget that goes to the literacy. It's not additional funding that we get. It's just part. That's what the library puts towards the, the program. Thanks. Okay, um, our expenditures. This is again for the current year, 15-16. Um, this pie chart here kind of shows a breakdown of where our costs go. Um, just like the rest of the library budget, the biggest part of the pie goes to salaries and benefits. Um, and in that salaries and benefits, the cost of that is the half-time literacy coordinator. <laughs> um, and then also we have two contract positions that work in the literacy office um, that manage the, uh, coordinate the tutors and training and all that of the tutors and then there's another per person who works as a receptionist and who also coordinates the students and does intake assessments and that kind of stuff. So that's the salary and benefit portion of this pie. Um, the operations includes things like um, membership in local literacy consortia, it includes supplies, event planning, marketing, volunteer appreciation, that's, that, that's what kind of stuff is in the operations. Um, in the literacy materials pie is um, both um, materials available for tutors and learners to help with the learning process. It, um, in the literacy office, we have a resource center that's full of great workbooks, materials, books, consumables, <laughs> um, that um, any tutor learner pair can come in and access and can take them with them and they can use them and it's, it's free to them. Um, and also uh, part of the, those materials are the, um, Elisa mentioned the Families for Literacy program. One of the focuses of that program is that these adult learners with children under the age of five, um, they are given mentoring and, and training specifically on how to read to their children. And so we provide them with a free high quality children's picture book and they get one each month and then their tutor help, goes over with them how to read to their child. Um, and then we, have, we also have set aside money this year to p purchase um, new materials for the circulating collections in the libraries. And those are um, collections you know, just for the regular library pu uh, public that are targeted for adult learners, um, easy health information, um, easy, no easy novels, you know, th things written at, at a learner level for adults. Um, that's what I got. What else? Oh, hey, okay, next slide. <laughs> Um, so about kind of the people who work for our literacy, we've got staff, we've got contract teachers, we've got volunteers. Um, Keo, as public services manager, she's over all of us, and she, 
rules us with a velvet fist. <laughs> um, I am the supervisor of the literacy program. Um, we have Elisa, who is our literacy coordinator, and she primarily um, works with um, administering the grants, making sure reporting is done, um, making sh you know, kind of making sure we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing. And I don't know what I did without her. She's awesome. <laughs> um, Melissa and Jessica are tutor, tutor coordinator, student coordinator, as I mentioned, that they um, work with the tutors and the students with the one-on-one -on -one program. Um, we've got, we, we hire a bunch of contract-based teachers. For that EL Civics program, we have two teachers, each with a, a bilingual aide who work in the classroom. Um, we have two different ESL teachers who work at the jail, and they've gone through the whole clearance process to be able to teach at the jail. And then we have another instructor who um, works at the, at the Great and Day Labor Center. And all those people, we could not do this without the more than 200 volunteers who work with us. Um, and some of these, I think we said that our, our longest volunteer is more than 10 years has been, been volunteering with this program. So we also have um, some volunteers to facilitate um, English conversation classes and also to assist a little bit with office support. Okay. So we wanted to talk um, a little bit more in detail about some of the service programs returning to the one-to-one -one, um, adult uh, learner to community volunteer meeting at the libraries. Um, this slide sort of shows you um, we use goals that are chosen by the adult learners. They choose their own literacy goals. There's space on the form for them to identify and write in their own chosen goal. Um, but that way we can measure outcomes. This is just a small sampling of some of the most recent goals that were achieved. It gives you an idea of what an adult learner might be interested in focusing their literacy learning on. Um, within this program, currently we have about 100 and I think it's 109 uh, adult learners learning throughout the county system. With matched with about 107 volunteer tutors. They're using about nine of our library branches to meet for those minimum two hours uh, a week. Um, there's also, we, Kathy gave a great description about the families for literacy focus for those adult learners who have those young children. Um, there's also the digital learning aspect, which is basically a quarterly um, laptop workshop and an opportunity for the le learner tutor pairs to check out a laptop for up to three months to work on digital literacy skills. And so that's all in the one-to-one -one program. From there, we have um, a free conversation class opportunity that takes place in the literacy office twice a week. It's free for all you know, English language learners. And it's endeavoring to bring those adult learners who come into the program, meet the student coordinator, but don't have enough verbal English skills to work with a non-bilingual volunteer. If they don't have that, they can't get into the program. So these free conversation classes are an effort to, to get them in and get those skills to that threshold level. Um, oh, very important, thank you. We'd really love to see that program um, expanded system-wide to any branch that would like to you know, model after it and has that vulnerable population that needs those verbal English skills. Currently it's facilitated by a group of about five or six um, volunteer facilitators. They'd love to have anybody come and shadow them and we'd love to provide any resources from our literacy collection to help get that started at other branches. Um, it's a wonderful service. Um, let's see. We went through Families for Literacy, and also in your packet, some of these ones that we're going to talk about in more detail, um, we did enclose a face sheet detailing all these programs and an example newsletter that goes out to tutors. But um, here's a snapshot of our learners. Question? I just have a quick question. Oh, Is there any teaching of literacy in native language? Or is it all in English? That's an excellent question because it comes up a lot in discussion boards. Um, in our program, there is not. But the question comes across my desk almost daily um, in that many people feel that it's extremely difficult for someone who's not literate in their first language to actually become literate in yet a second foreign language. So. Um, 
we do share across these topics, you know, okay, if you don't have a Spanish program, if that happens to be the language we're talking about, or you don't have an Asian speaking program to begin with, you know, what are the best materials? What have you found the absolutely most useful textbooks um, to stock? Um, but no, at our program at the moment, because it utilizes volunteers throughout the system, is really focused on that. Now we do have, you know, the ESL going on in different sites um, where we can have a bilingual, you know, uh, aid assist. But yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, in November, Elisa, myself, and Brett attended a conference down at the CLA um, in Pasadena, the California Library Association conference, um, and we attend attended a, a half-day conference that specifically was going over requirements and um, practices of the CLLS, the California Library Literacy Services Program. Um, and one of the things that they really underlined at that point was that the one-on-one -on -one tutoring and the funding for that is specifically for literacy and not ESL and they really made that that distinction so that like even when we have English conversation classes we can't call it ESL classes we have to call it English conversation classes and um, you're right that that is uh, um, it, it doesn't seem to meet the needs of what our, our population is um, and I think that that's going to be kind of a way that we can be creative moving forward with the strategic plan on how the library can offer such services in conjunction with the literacy services that we offer. I just will put on my master's hat. My, it was in literacy. And mm -hmm. uh, it's so much easier to learn in your native language <coughs> before you try a second language. Mm -hmm. And um, Spanish is really helpful because it's so consistent as opposed to English. Anyway. Yes. That's just a question. Thanks. Sounds like we have more than one resident expert on the commission. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, this slide gives you an idea, just a snapshot of who our learners are demographically. You can see we have many more um, female learners enrolled in our one-to-one -one program. Um, it's a diverse group with um, the races, but the majority are from the Latino community. And then age-wise, we've got um, active adult learners anywhere from 20 to 70 or better, but most of them are uh, between, you know, 40 and 49. Hmm. Thank you. Um, so that brings us to... Uh, the EL Civics Program, EL is for English Learner. This is um, moving beyond the library-based uh, to two elementary school classrooms here in Santa Rosa, focusing on the parents who are interested in learning civic topics. Um, they go to their child's elementary school. They get to bring their children and drop them off into a classroom where there's a teacher, which really, I think, is a key thing to think about with adult learner needs, what allows a parent in the evening to go out in the Latino community and take a class. Um, it, it's a beautiful setup there. They choose their own civic uh, topics. Uh, they've been working on interacting with their child's teachers, you know, how to write an absence note, how to understand those communications and commu communicate back in English and feel comfortable, access to emergency services, and then they also choose access to employment and training resources. Um, I think, yeah, we're, this fiscal year we've got 43 students. They've been working on two semesters. They kind of follow a school, a school model. And yes, classes do meet uh, two evenings a week um, for two hours. And then that brings us to our inmate literacy services. It's a partnership with the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office, two credentialed teachers teaching at two different detention facility uh, locations, teaching ESL and literacy. Um, there is the option to have volunteers uh, go in and work one-to-one -one on literacy services, but it has presented um, some challenges, but it, it's a pretty, um, pretty amazing program, and I have seen uh, some people come out and follow up and come into the one-to-one -one program, which is really neat. 
but I think Kathy has some more details about the contract. Oh, I was just was going to say that um, we have just, like this month, have renewed our contract with the Sheriff's Department for another three years, and they've actually expanded the amount of money they're giving us for the next uh, contract. Um, and then I just wanted to share some of the challenges and opportunities that are, that are inherent in this program. Um, challenges include the fact that sometimes the learners, no matter what their uh, motivation level, sometimes they're unable to either attend or continue to attend these uh, classes because either maybe they're released from, from detention or maybe they are, have bad behavior and aren't allowed to go. <laughs> so there are challenges like that that the teachers have, have told us that um, the continuity is, is difficult. Um, another challenge is that, um, um, I thought there was another challenge here. Oh, there it is. Um, is that the background check process can be difficult and can dissuade teachers and volunteers from participation. Um, there are some wonderful opportunities, though, with this program. Um, one is that these learners are very motivated to learn their skills. They have a lot of time on their hands, and this is an opportunity for them to really maybe get something that they never, they didn't have the chance to get or didn't have the encouragement to get in another part of their life. So it, that's a great opportunity. Um, and then the other thing that um, is great is that teachers and volunteers who feel strongly about, civic, uh, about social justice, this is a, a really wonderful way for them to give back in a really meaningful way. So this, this partnership, um, we're really excited that we were able to renew for another three years. So. Mm. Oh, Me, you? You. Me, okay. <laughs> Um, so the, the strategic plan, I love the strategic plan. Um, uh, I ran into Barbara on the way in to, to the meeting today and she was joking about how I carry my strategic plan with me wherever I go. <laughs> and so I did bring it with me today, it's right here. Um, we pulled out just three of the, of the uh, objectives of the strategic plan that we felt um, strongly represent what literacy services can be at the library in the next three years. And, there, and I just pulled them out there. One is obviously create a coordinated comprehensive literacy services program. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Um, seek out and communicate with vulnerable populations and develop classes and services to help people. Um, if they can't read, if they can't speak the language, how are they going to be able to acquire the knowledge and skills necessary. This, again, is to me a strong, strong um, place where literacy services are going to be important in, in the development of this, or in the carrying out of the strategic plan. Um, and then the third one I put up there is to provide library staff with information and training needed to serve our vulnerable populations. Adult learners have different needs or different um, challenges than the regular patron walking in off the street. We don't know what caused them to, whether it's drop out of high school or not be able to read or you know, whatever their challenges were. Owning up to that when you're 50 is so much harder than when you're 15. So um, we would really like to build literacy into that, that um, objective of training for staff of how to, how to work with and how to help these, these vulnerable people. Um, in addition to the three I listed up there, there's hundreds of other, hundreds. There's several other um, ties to literacy services in the facility plan, in volunteer engagement, in collaborating and partnering with mission-aligned organizations, um, providing library services in underserved areas. All of these have strands in the, in the strategic plan. So we're really excited to um, offer these truly needed services. Do you want to go? Challenges. Um, <laughs> Uh, just from my perspective, um, the challenges that I would highlight would be um, uh, in, within the facilities for this relationship to work, the one-to-one the -one model, and it has worked for 30 years, and I think it's a great model that embodies the uh, library's current mission to bring together you know, people, ideas, and information for a strong community. I think it's a great program that's really closely aligned with that. But there do have to be collaborative working spaces within the library. And currently, they kind of conflict with the patron who maybe wants a nice, quiet, peaceful library. These people have to read aloud. Uh, they have to be read aloud, too. That's how we all learn to, to read, and that's how we have taught people to read. And it, that doesn't really change. So as you look at facilities and you think about literacy, um, taking some of the uh, library models on campuses would be a great idea um, to look at the collaborative small spaces for two people or small group to meet and not disturb the other library patrons. 
Um, also, uh, for digital literacy, thinking about putting a, uh, a terminal in those spaces or in a lot of them so that you know the tutor can get with them in the right space and show and they have to discuss it. Um, so I see that as a, a big area of focus to expanding the program. Um, but the model's working and it's worth expanding. Um, another place though, you know, right from the start is sort of that definition. What will we be? What's a good fit? What can the library do best? What can an educational institution do best? And what are our agencies already doing? So I think that would be a great um, place to start. But it's a wonderful program um, and we're excited about uh, these strategic plans. What's next? The future. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Um, in the immediate future, as Elisa said, it's, it is our 30th anniversary of the literacy program, and we are planning a big celebration in September, which is also Literacy Month, um, to recognize staff, learners, tutors. Um, we are also um, publishing a book of student writings, and we have been soliciting, or we gave, we gave our tutors an assignment to work with their students to write something. And um, we've been collecting those writings over the past month or two, or longer. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, we've gotten, even though it was something that we needed because we thought we should put together an anthology, we've gotten nothing but wonderful reports about the tutors. They already had a great relationship with, you know, their student, but they learned even more about them. And they seemed that, you know, it really got the students motivated to work on writing, which is, you know, even more challenging than sort of the learning to read part. Um, so it's been good all the way. And I think it's going to be a fabulous collection. And so then, um, so we would like to take the, this opportunity to invite all of you commissioners to put that on your calendar for September that we will be doing this literacy uh, celebration. We don't have a date yet, but please do look for an invitation to come. Um, as we said earlier, we are looking forward to the changes that will come to the entire library system through the implementation of the strategic plan. Um, and we are very excited that so much of the focus is on assisting the adult learners in our community, and we look forward to collaborating with the library system to grow this further. Questions? Uh oh. <laughs> I, I have uh, uh, comments and questions. And, and first, I want to thank uh, both of you and your staff for keeping this together because I've been around long enough to know when this is a full time position and there's a full time staff and uh, you're, you're making it look like it's a full time staff, and I know you're all part time. So <laughs> thank you. And, uh, and I just I have to make a comment too. What the importance of this is what's happened in the last couple of years in Sonoma County is literacy services have gone away. There's uh, one adult ed left in all of Sonoma, and uh, th that puts an extra burden on library literacy services because um, the the statistics are well. I'll I'll say what commonly is 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 used as a statistic. Twenty five percent of our population. Uh, reads at a, a seventh grader below level. Now, I, I know it's more than that because the Chronicle, for example, is written in a seventh grade level. Um, and and uh, you know, so that we know that the majority of the population reads at a seventh grade level. And then you throw in, as we talked about, um, you know, if your first language is not English and you're not literate in that first language, it makes it even harder to learn English. And there are all the consequences in the county from workforce, uh, you know, basic skills to parenting. Uh, the, the teacher, your, your first teacher is your parent. And if you can't read or write, um, you know, you're going to have a hard time helping your kids with their homework or even reading to your kids. And if you're not reading at grade level in third grade, you're going to be in trouble the rest of your, your uh, uh, school. So I'm just saying this is important. And, and it should be supported uh, by the commission and by the library. And we should figure out a way to get a full-time staff. And, and what is the waiting list right now for, uh, to, uh, for learners? For learners, I think they have about um, 40 um, 
adult learners, by far the biggest challenges are, you know, the adult that works full time and can only meet on Saturday because it doesn't meet with the interest of a lot of people who have volunteer talent and time. They right. don't like to give up their weekends. And um, what we've been doing for certain locations that don't seem to have enough tutors is just trying to do outreach. Um, and it's constantly shifting. You know, these are busy learners and and volunteers, but we, we try and keep on top of it. Well, I, I so there there is a waiting list in mm -hmm. most library literacy programs. There are waiting lists, and so I would also make a comment: if you've never tutored an individual, it's really well worth it. Mm -hmm. And I would I would uh, I don't know, challenge is the right word, but I I'd, I'd say if you really want to get involved. With all the extra time you have, I know all the commissioners have a lot of extra time. <laughs> I, I would volunteer as a, as a uh, tutor. It's really fulfilling, um, and uh, you're you're really making a difference in these adults' lives. You really are. So I'm, um, I, I guess in summation, I'm supporting the program, <laughs> as you as you know. And uh, if if there's anything that um, you know we can do to help. I, I will, uh, short of forming a committee, <laughs> uh, I'm going to do another committee. But, uh, but, may, but I, I, may I just make one comment? Yes. Um, Elisa here, uh -huh. she, was a, she was a tutor, with, and that's how she kind right. of learned about the program. And when, and when the position opened right. up, that's because she was a tutor is why she, she applied for our, our position. Excellent. But in <laughs> summation, I'll, and I'll stop, is it, it's, it's really the health of our, um, our, our citizens, uh, literally, if you're not literate, your health goes way down. You can't read a prescription bottle is one of the things. Uh, you're, you're not going to be able to get a meaningful job. Um, we're, we're not going to bring business into the county if we don't have a literate, trained workforce. And, and this, this is uh, ground zero right here, right? It's the library literacy program. There's no other program that accepts individuals that have this low literacy. Even even the Petaluma Adult Education Program, uh, ex, you know, really accepts a little higher uh, level. Uh, they, they don't do one on one, so uh, that's why it's really important. So this is this is really 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 important. Yeah, I mean we, everything we do here is really really important. So I know I'm, I'm talking longer, but hey, how often do I get to do this? How often? <laughs> so anyway, you've heard me say it before. But anyway, so uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I appreciate and it. And I need to check with Ken, but I think my math is right, that if we put together the 80,000 and the 220, or the whatever it is, it's around yeah. 220, which is about 1% of our budget. <laughs> I've been known to make Mathematic. Maybe we need math literacy, but I think that's about right. So this, all these wonderful services are about one percent of our budget. Uh, and while Ken's calculating that, um, <laughs> do you remember how much the uh, increase in the grant from the sheriff's department is? It's only about two thousand dollars a year. It went from ten thousand to I think twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's still good. Did you have something, Linda? I just want to know about their training program. Um, thank you, by the way. Uh, thank you. Um, the volunteer uh, coordinator is really a key, the tutor, the tutor coordinator. She's really a key um, employee in our office. Everybody comes to know her. Um, and basically, interested parties are invited to come to an orientation evening, which kind of explains, you know, what adult literacy is, because I think many of us think, oh, you know, how I learn to read or how I taught my child to read. Um, but what is it to uh, teach an adult, another, you know, individual who is an adult to read? So she gives an overview of what it is, what the problems are that, that Paul just spoke to, um, that the stakes are high. Um, but that these are individuals who already have a lot of pressures. You're not going to be able to take the same approach that you would, that you might have with your own kids. And that's very helpful. And then if you're, you know, still interested, you come to the Saturday um, full day training that she conducts. And they give you resources, a great sort of like uh, teacher resource book uh, called Lit Start that, you know, if you, if you were stuck, you could 
find a topic in there of how to approach storytelling, how to approach you know, using pictures to begin uh, talking about words, how to work from phonics if that's where your adult learner is when you meet them uh, versus you know, maybe they're at the sentence structure level or maybe they can read good but when you say what does that mean, none of it has been comprehended and so different strategies for a volunteer tutor to know about that and then she's a constant resource we get people who are calling all the time to say my students stuck here so it's a wonderful ongoing supportive training and then that library's literacy um, collection sort of is focused in many of these goal areas so whether it's comprehension phonics um, uh, preparing for the citizenship test. We have all the materials to get out to them. So I hope that, that answers most. And um, the tutor coordinator also leads quarterly, or maybe even more frequently, maybe every other month, um, workshops that are continuing education for the tutors. Um, one workshop might be on how to work with the roles and goals structure with your, with your learner. Another workshop might be on how to use library databases and resources that might be useful to your learner. And so they, they have different focuses on in those, in those quarterly workshops. Recently, we were invited by um, a local organization called Literacy Works to attend one of their trainings. <laughs> and how many, how many of us went? I think about 15 of the um, Sonoma County Library volunteer tutors were eager at the chance to get more training, more in-depth training, um, more ideas. And so when the invitation was ex ex you know, extended to us, um, our volunteers just wanted more. And that also is something to consider you know, with expanding the program, because a lot more could be done for the learners with more training for the volunteers. Ooh, one more thing. Um, I mentioned these quarterly workshops and the trainings that, that Elisa mentioned that um, are conducted for our tutors and potential tutors. Um, and those are actually not just conducted here at Central, they're conducted wherever there's a need at a branch. So I know that there's, many of them are held at Sonoma because a lot of the, of the tutor learner pairs are currently at Sonoma. So. Barbara? I had a few questions. I'm uh, very intrigued by all you do. I did visit the literacy library, you know, my a year or so ago, and it's it's really a separate facility, you know. There, mm -hmm. um, I wondered on one of your early slides. It says offsite ABE slash ESL, and I know of course what ESL is, but I don't know what ABE is. Adult basic education. Adult basic education. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's uh, trying to distinguish itself that perhaps these learners are not coming to English as a second language, but this is just basic adult education, perhaps for an English speaker who, you know, for whatever reasons, has struggled with literacy, um, basic skills. And a lot of times those categories are set um, by the funding source. You know, we will fund adult basic education, but we won't fund the ESL. Or back to the question about, you know, can you just go ahead and teach in Spanish and start them there? And some funders say no, and so you, you have to yeah. check the right box. Okay. So how many ABE versus ESL students do we get? Well, you know, the demographic slide by far uh, the Latino community, who would be non-native English speaking, is uh, the largest. You know, way, way yeah. more. But we do have people who come into us um, who are native English speakers and just can't, you know, read or comprehend or do what they want to in their life without better literacy skills. So that's a small proportion. Though. Smaller, yeah. And so then back to just the, the cost of the program. So the hundred, $140,000 in indirect kind of overheadish kind of costs that don't show and then something like uh, 170000 or something. What did I add? Wait a minute. Did I add this up? Something. So it's somewhere around $300,000 for this program. Yes. And some of which we get back <laughs> from these other funding sources. Yes. But, um, yeah. And then I was trying to get the numbers, like how many people were serving, just kind of get a roughly how much it costs per person mm -hmm. to serve. 
And under the learners, it says we do, uh, it looks like there's 151 if you add up the females and the males, uh, 35 plus 116. And I don't know who I'm missing, but so that's 151 people. And those are specific to the one-on-one -on -one tutoring program. And then we have additional people served by each of the other programs as well. If, um, I don't have a overall total number tonight, but we could get that for you. Okay, so our, this, is, this isn't really all the learners. This is That's the one-on-one. -on -one. specifically for the one-on-one -on -one tutoring okay. program. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering how many uh, inmates have been served with these other challenges of getting in there and the background checks and all that. Do you know offhand? Offhand, I don't know um, because I came in. Uh, we can get it for you. I came in sort of as the program was kind of closing down for the holidays with my position. But um, I do meet with the two instructors, and they tend to describe, you know, ongoing weekly classes with about anywhere from, you know, five to. Uh, 12 inmates that come on a regular basis, but then as Kathy was trying to describe, they're released. Uh, yeah. They're not allowed out at that hour for some reason, so it's a hard target. Yeah, and those are actual credential teachers that go in there. And then you also mentioned volunteers need to be screened. Mm -hmm. So do the teacher and the volunteer go in there together, or what's the what do they do? They have not gone in there together, and we have to be honest in that um, we have not had a lot of success, and we've been trying to um, work with one of the instructors who uh, really understood the program about why our volunteers don't, well, one of the reasons they told us they don't like it is because they show up, they go through the clearance, some of them find the background check really yeah. um, invasive, invasive. Yeah. and then if they get through all that, they'll show up and they'll say, no, they can't come out today, which is really different from the one-to-one -one program at the library. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's coordinating the, the service that's offered is, is very different inside that facility, yeah. and we're trying to work on it, but it's been a challenge for the tutors in particular. But the, okay. te the teachers are teaching classes. I'm sorry. Can I uh, ask a couple more words? The teachers are teaching classes. The tutors are then going in on the one on one. Yes, that was the model. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, okay. One more question. Rick. Um, seek out and communicate with vulnerable populations, which is one of your goals. How uh, have you had thoughts about how you seek out a vulnerable population? They aren't walking into the library. How do you find them? Um, our program is kind of unique because with the Latino community, we find they are walking right in and asking for an education. Um, so we don't have to seek out those learners. Um, the shyer learners who might be English speaking, who might be older, who maybe had uh, somebody in their life who did all this and maybe something happened to that person, they're the ones that you would try and do outreach you know, for. And um, I probably be honest, I think the program is, like Paul said, you know, kind of like really trying to manage all these things. And so the outreach opportunities, um, the time and the staff and that for them, it's, it's much harder. But we try with, you know, visual images to have different um, promotions that look like different types of people at different ages in their life. Um, sometimes we use um, letters to schools asking teachers who might work, you know, meet the parents at conferences to tell them we're about adults. Do you know any who might need our services? Because that's been a recommended. Um, and also other service agencies who might meet these vulnerable populations and remember us and make a referral. Thank you. Thank you. And then it just, one more quick, quick answer to that is that um, that um, strategic plan goal to seek out and communicate with vulnerable populations is not just a goal for the literacy program, it's a goal for the library as a whole. And the literacy program, will, we will make sure that we are part of that conversation when the, the branch managers, the public services management team, starts to work on what that project plan will look like. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you for what you do. Okay. Um, no public comment, so we'll move ahead to action item by motion. Uh, item number 10, adjourning the meetings in honor. Um, do we have any discussion or questions regarding the proposal? 
we have two people out of the room. Um, so, uh, shall we ask for a motion? Or so I'll second. Did you get those? Move. Paul. Paul. Oh, Paul. Oh. And, um, and Paul Heavenrich. Second. Discussion. All right, so it has been moved that we adopt this policy about adjourning a meeting in honor. Um, uh, is there any further discussion? Right. I, I just wanted to say that I thought it was really nicely done. It was tightened up. I like the fact that it's connected specifically to library service. Uh, we kind of had kind of all over the place uh, initially, and I, I thought it was a very nicely done. Thank you. All right. Any other comment? Any public comment? All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So the um, uh, the motion has carried. All right, we are moving right along here to the uh, lab appointments, and appears as if there are none. Um, items to include in commission notes. Procedure. Sorry, Garcia. The we just approved a procedure. Let's list that. What we just approved. The uh, praise for the literacy program. Mm -hmm. uh, any other items per se for the commission notes? Should we mention our workshop? Uh, the, 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 we, we're changing the name from retreat to workshop. Yeah. Uh, so we had a, 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 work, a uh, commission workshop, workshop mm -hmm. study session. Not study session, workshop. All right. Um, uh, this is related to the issue that I brought up at the beginning of the meeting. Do I have volunteers on the procedures and standing operating uh, committee besides Hillary? Uh, I'll volunteer. Okay. Hillary, Reese, Helena, myself. All right. Any other people just dying to be on that committee? All right. Any items that people would like to include on the agenda um, for the next meeting that we want to be sure is taken care of? Yes. Since we're talking about budget, I would like a budget on what was spent for Rosalind and who spent what. All right. The foundation, supposedly there was some uh, lab money and and the money that was put by the library and how we go into the future since we're having a budget workshop. Okay, thank you. Other items? Yeah, I have one. All okay. right. Uh, and I don't know if it's related to facilities management, uh, but as I read through the JPA, uh, I found the lease arrangement certainly with Santa Rosa to be of interest. So um, along with budgeting, um, what our lease arrangements are and or payments and or status of the status leases. Status of leases and what we owe, what we don't owe, those sorts of things. So just a little bit about our buildings and who owns them and how they get paid for. Okay. So I think I hear two issues there. If I Help me if I'm in, misinterpreting it. But one of them is the status of the leases and the other is... Um, the uh, extent of expenses for building maintenance and so forth. Okay, and I imagine that's going to be part of the facilities management plan to some degree. Yep, okay. All right, so thank you for that. Um, Tim? Yes. I would like to propose a discussion item. So I would like to know how decisions are made about what services happen at various branches. For example, there's a uh, an upcoming path to college program workshop series happening, various branches, and but not all branches. And so I've noticed other things that get rolled out, and I'm just curious how the, what the thought process is of who gets what is it based on math or some other criteria? Okay. 
Do you want to answer that now, Kia, or do you want to? Well, I think that's Kia's assignment. Correct. I was just signaling to her. No, no. You don't have to answer it now. Okay. okay. All right. So that's a discussion item for a future meeting. All right. I think we need to, um, we're saying we're adjourning for 9 a.m., 30 a.m. on April 4th. Um, I believe it's probably wiser to say that the general meeting will be around 2. Does that seem reasonable for the budget workshop? Uh, and then we'll have, we'll have the closed session at 1. Is an hour soon enough? Long enough? Uh, we would be paying for lunch, I imagine. Okay, we need to be here at 1 for the closed session, unless you're on that committee, which you still have a chance to volunteer for. Okay. <laughs> Just so the closed session is, a, is, a is at 1, evaluation. the director's evaluation closed session meeting for staff and I mean, not staff, but commission input. Budget workshop is at two. two. All right. So we're here at one. Uh, any other things? Yes, Reese. No, we'll decide a time. I would imagine it'll be closer to ten-ish, but uh, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> ten-ish. Around ten. Okay. All right. Um, there being no further business, uh, the meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.